Hi, Fred B. here, and in this video I will present a SOLIDWORKS tutorial on how to create a dodecahedron model parameterized to edge length. This video is based upon the work of two prior videos, the first of which where I derived the dodecahedron angle, the dihedral angle, and the derivative extrusion angle that I use in this video. And in the second video, I derived the edge to height ratio. I made those two previous videos because I had trouble finding inf any information on the internet or YouTube providing that particular information. And it's convenient to me to have an edge parameterized dodecahedron model for the work I'm doing. Now, also, I found this method I use to create the dodecahedron in this video from another video, and I like this method very much. It's simplistic, and the simpler a model is, the less there is to go wrong with it. So there's a one point where you have to be very careful, and I will draw your attention to that. To begin with, I have SolidWorks 216 opened up here uh, to a new part. And the first thing we need to do is come up here to Tools and go to Equations and create four global variables. The first variable will be called Length. for edge length, and we'll start with a figure of 50 for that. I have my units set to millimeters and degrees for here. Our second variable will be ratio, and we will set that to 2.227032729. 2 And for our third variable, we will call that height. And we will use length times ratio for that figure. And for our fourth and final variable, we will use angle for our extrusion angle, and we will set that to 26.56505118. Okay, and that concludes our global variables. Now we want to start a sketch on the top plane. We want to draw a midpoint line below the origin. And for constraints here, we want to constrain the midpoint of the line to be vertical with the origin. And constrain the two endpoints to be horizontal. Now we can bring this down a little bit. And we want to draw a pentagon. So we're going to use our five-sided polygon tool. And draw a pentagon. And now this is the tricky part. You want to constrain, or delicate part rather, this midpoint and you need to get both this construction circle and that line, that bottom line, on the pentagon highlighted. And then we want to constrain this to be a coincident constraint. If you fail to get them both highlighted, the bottom line on the pentagon and the construction circle, you will get an error as soon as you try to extrude this. And you'll have to go back to the sketch and constrain that properly or it might even be easier to just delete the sketch and start all over to get that constrained properly. Now the next thing we want to do is to constrain the endpoint and merge that with the apex on the pentagon. 
Okay. Now this is done, we should have one degree of freedom left. If you can move it like that, that's a good sign. And we want to come and, and put a dimension on this line here. And this is the only way I found that I could tie the edge parameter into the pentagon. You can't, there's an absence of any way, apparently, to dimension, to put a global variable dimension onto the pentagon directly. So you have to merge this line to it and then put the dimension on the line. So then we go equals our global variable for length. Okay. Now we should have a fully defined sketch. Close up the sketch. And if all was done properly, when we extrude this, it should be. We come up here to extrude boss. And for our depth, we want to set that equal to our global height variable. We turn our angle on and set that to the global angle variable. We want to extrude outwards. Okay, it looks good. So that's so far. You should, this edge length should be, uh, or rather this total length should be two point, you know, two times the edge length. So if it looks like, you know, once, twice, plus a little bit, then it's right. Now I recommend you go and to your global variables and change the size on this. Go smaller first. So we're at 50 now. Let's go down to 25. And if you messed up the sketch and the constraints, you should get an error immediately when you try to rescale this. And then go larger. And we'll bring it up to 100. And all should be good. Okay, so, so far so good here. Now we want to draw a sketch on this top plane. There we go perpendicular to it. Start a sketch. Change to wireframe mode. View. Now we want to create a sketch just uh, 180 degrees rotated from the first. So we want to start with a midpoint line. Draw it above the origin this time. Okay. And apply the same constraints. The midpoint will be vertical to the origin. And the endpoints will be horizontal. Okay, and we draw another pentagon. And again, here is the, the delicate constraint. Constrain this midpoint this midpoint you want to get both this line and the construction circle highlighted. When they're both highlighted, coincident. Okay. And then our last is to merge the endpoint with the pentagon. And again, we check here if this is a good sign. We add our dimension, tie in our length dimension, length global variable. Okay. And it says our sketch is fully defined. But the sketch can be fully defined without that delicate constraint. So then when you go to extrude, you have a problem. The only way to find out if you did it right is to extrude it. Let me change back to shade mode. Okay, isometric view. 
highlight our new sketch. Now we want to extrude cut, set our height to our global variable for height, flip the side to cut, set our angle to the global variable for angle, and cut. All right, looks good so far. And again, the acid test is to rescale it. We want to go smaller first, so we're at 100 now. We'll go back to 50. And it's scaled without an error, so that's good. And we'll try 100 just to be sure or 200 rather, we want to go larger than what we started out with. Give it a bit of a workout and it's scaled up perfectly, no errors, and we now have a functional dodecahedron model parameterized to edge length. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you find it useful. And as always, tips are welcome via PayPal. And thanks for watching.